Hello, welcome to the Enjoyers Podcast. I'm your host, Justin. Uh, today, we're doing another viewer requested review. This time for Tales of the Crypt Season 2, Episode 5. Three's a crowd. Um, I honestly fucking hated this episode. It was like very cringe and awkward to watch because the episode is basically about this guy played by Gavin O'Harely, however you pronounce his name. Um, you'll know him. He did a lot of 90s stuff. This episode aired in May 1st, 1990. And he was in Willow and uh, he was in also in Sharp's Eagle, which I think is the second Sharp movie if you ever watched that uh, movie series where it's like a BBC movie series based off a uh, book series about like um, this main, this British soldier fighting in uh, the Napo Napoleonic Wars against uh, France even though if you watch those movies the they have like the English are very left wing leaning so it's like why are you even fighting the fucking socialist French anyway oh because you know like monarchy or whatever I don't fucking I don't fucking know uh, which is funny because the mo like, win or lose, um, sorry, what I meant to say is, despite the fact that the England won the Napoleonic Wars, they still lost because, um, if people don't know, they got tricked by the Rothschilds, uh, right before the final battle between, um, General Re Wesley or, Welling or Lord Wellington against Napoleon, um, in London was a wreck and all their all the stocks were dropping and people were trying to get out of Dodge right and the Rothschilds uh, were the first to find out who the Rothschilds being the the Jewish German uh, banking family right international banking family uh, who loaned England money uh, for the fight um, Napoleon, which is that that's in the first uh, uh, movie of Sharp, of the Sharp series, right? So like, they were the first to find out who won the the battle, but told everybody that uh, Lord Wellington lost instead of won, and uh, they bought all the stock for all the uh, companies in England, and after that they end up owning like. Uh, England through uh, through debt control, <laughs> basically. So it's like, yeah, they they won they won the battle, but they lost the the war in their country <laughs> in the fucking process, and that's why England is a shithole today. Um, so this episode is about Gavin uh, Harley uh, is married to this woman. I think she's played by Ruth D'Souza. Um, they're on a honeymoon in, like, I assume... I think it's Italy, but I'm not 100% sure. They're on their honeymoon. It's being paid for by their rich friend, Paul, played by Paul Lieber, who uh, used to be their um, best man and friend. She used to date his his fucking wife. And he's like down on his luck. He, I, I, it's implied he lost his job, and he's working as a bartender. He feels very self uh, insecure about himself because you know, um, he, the rich friend, uh, has been spending a lot of time with his wife, buying her nice gifts, paying, paying for their like anniversary trip which is their 10th year anniversary, and it's implied that they're having trouble um, conceiving, having children, right? So, like, the whole episode is just, like, you um, cringing from the, fa from the fa fact that, like, he um, feels like he's losing his wife to his rich uh, friend who used to date her. Did I mention that? No, I don't know anybody who would, like, let their fucking spouses uh, hang out with ex-boyfriends and shit, right? Like, it's, it's like, a well-known thing that, like, people don't do that. Even if the, like, 
other side. Like, you, it, like, would your fucking girlfriend let you hang out with your ex? Fuck no, right? So this episode is very misogynistic against men. It totally makes men look fucking bad. And it was very hard for me to watch. Um, because it's like, dude, like... Because I know that the twist is going to be like, it was on his head... And he's overreacting. <laughs> and it's like a Tales of the Crypt episode. So, like, obviously he, uh, you know, he kills his wife. He kills the fucking, um, the rich, the rich guy. And it turns out, oh, he wasn't have, uh, having an affair with his wife, um, she she was actually pregnant with his baby, and he accidentally um, murdered his wife and his unborn child. And that's how the episode ends. And it's like it's very it was very like predictable, but it's like the way the fucking rich guy was talking to his fucking wife, uh, like touching her, constantly buying her shit, and like having like like you know like what was what would you call it um intimate conversations and all that it's like dude if this was real life it he would have had he would have been fucking fucking his wife though if it was real life i i would sooner divorce than let some fucking guy uh like uh, like talk that way about my fucking wife you know like hanging out with her and all this fucking shit i would be like I would be like, you know, let's, let's call her like, uh, well, her name's Rosa. Rosa, I'm putting my foot down. You can't hang out with that fucking guy anymore or we're getting a fucking divorce. This is fucking bullshit. <laughs> That's like how I would have handled it. Like I've, I've fucking, I've dumped girls for, for just flirting with dudes on Facebook. <laughs> so it's like, like how like anybody, any man would put up with this shit is like remarkable. Like. Uh, in my opinion, besides from the fact of him killing his wife and her lover, I would have just packed up my shit and went home. And, like, you know, her, her fucking witch, rich fucking friend could pay for her fucking plane, plane trip. Um, so, yeah, I obviously, I did not like the episode. The only pro... I, I actually wrote shit down for, for this. The only pros were you had a great performance by the main character which th this is probably the best performance i've ever seen from this guy oh and he was also i forgot to mention he was also in um happy days and that's probably how he got the willow row because like um willow was directed by ron howard w which is writ writ was written by um george lucas who if you haven't seen the Willow movie, it's a great movie, but it's basically George Lucas, like, ripping off fucking Lord of the Rings. Uh, and the reason I didn't review it for Fantasy Month is because uh, I had watched it last year, and I don't want to, like, uh, review any any, mo any movies I saw recently because I feel like that would fuck up my review. Um, yeah, so, like, the cons... Repetitive plot line. This is like what the fourth or fifth episode I fucking seen of like Tales from the Crypt where they where it's about like a husband or a wife killing their uh, spouse. It's like, dude, I know, like, I don't. This is a meme. I don't know if it's true, but like, there was like an episode of South Park where you had like couples getting addicted to true crime uh, stories where like that it's. That were about like you know husbands or wives killing their like you know significant others. So I don't know if that's a thing that's in like real life. I know there's like a lot of, a lot of true crime YouTube channels. I don't watch them, but I heard like there's a lot of true crime YouTube channels that are um, run by housewives and shit. So it's like I know fucking girls are into this shit. It's just like I did not like this at all. Um, well, my other critiques were, um, predictable ending, makes men look bad, unrealistic, most people don't have spouses associated with it, exes, I already mentioned that, 
But other than that, it was okay. John Cassiers, um, as the as uh, the Crypt Keeper, made some you know funny punny jokes. If I had to give this a rating, I would have to give it five out of ten. Um, the only reason I gave it five out of ten and didn't give it a bad review, a uh, rating, because I know girls like this shit. So obviously, if you're a woman, you would probably enjoy this episode. A lot more than me because I'm the punching bag for men. I feel like men are the punching bag for this episode. All right, later.